Greetings the internet, this is Ninark, and welcome back to my Pokemon style RPG tutorial. Uh, this is part two, and we're going to be going over collisions. If you haven't watched part one, you should consider doing that, otherwise you'll be incredibly lost. Um, one of the first things I want to do is actually change my window size to 544 by 384, and this was just a personal thing. It was a little bit too small. Our, our character was a little bit too big, in my opinion. Anyway. Uh, not a big change. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. Uh, I mean, do whatever you want. All right, so uh, let's get right into the action. Um, I'm going to create a new object, and I'm going to make it a sprite. And this is going to be our wall. So I'm going to resize this to 32 by 32, fill it up with some bluish color. And I want to make sure that I have the origin point in the top left corner. Cool. All right, there's one, and I want to introduce you guys to something called families. Families are like a group of objects uh, that you can all put into one kind of container and reference all of them at the same time when you reference its family. Um, so let me create another sprite for the sake of example. I'm going to make this one orange, and I'm going to resize it to 32 by 32. Align top left because it's going to do something weird. Did it? Whatever. Uh, align to the top left corner. That's not what I meant to click on. There you go. All right. So we have two sprites here that are going to be two different walls in this example. So we're going to call them wall zero one, and this one's going to be wall zero two. And then we want to go down to this folder that says families. Right click and add a family. And this dialog box will come up. Uh, on the left is all your objects in the game, and on the right is the objects that are inside your family. So let's pick wall 1, put it on there, wall 2, press this add button, it'll add it to there, and then if you accidentally get your player in there, you can just click on this left arrow that remove. It's pretty intuitive, but you know, just so you guys are uh, you know, in tune with the idea of making a game. Anyway, so let's press OK and rename this family to Collider, or Colliders, it really doesn't matter what you call it. And you can always change it later. So let's stretch this out a little bit and hold down control. You can copy and move it. And this one, put it right here, and we'll hold down control and do some other stuff. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah, so this does nothing, obviously. And you know, just to prove it, in case you wanted to be proved this does nothing, our character still moves right through all these walls. So let's get into the code. Now, uh, another thing I wanted to change is that all these on key pressed. Uh, we can actually delete. We don't really need these, actually. That's not what I asked you to do, Windows 10. Uh, so you can delete those completely. Make sure you leave the right arrow is down, etc. code, because that actually works. But as you can see, if I run the code, everything is fine. All right, so uh, adding the collision is actually pretty simple. We're going to right click on right arrow is down, and then add another condition. We'll go to player and down to is overlapping at offset. Now let's click on this and I'll explain what these mean. We're going to do the offset x to 1, leave y at 0, and we're going to object we're going to select is the colliders object that we have just made, our family. Cool. So overlapping at op offset, what does that do? Well, uh, if we have a character right here and we say overlapping at offset 1 to the x, it's actually going to uh, virtually move our character one pixel to the right and check to see if there's anything in uh, colliding with it at that point so it's gonna obviously I can't I can do this I guess so it'll move it to right there ish and then go am I colliding with anything and if it's not we want them to continue moving and then if we if there is something like in this case where you see that he's going over and there's a wall here we want him to not move in that situation so let me just make sure I didn't do anything stupid Cool. Um, okay, so, but the problem here is if right arrow is down and it is overlapping at offset, we actually want it to not move. So we want uh, this to be inverted. So if you right click on this and invert it, now it will say, is this not overlapping in, at one pixel to the right? Okay, move to the right. Is it now colliding with something to the right? Yes, do not move. I hope that made sense. I really want you guys to understand 
what you're doing and not just mindlessly copying and pasting code because that makes you a bad game designer. So let's copy this. For down arrow, we want it to be x0 and y positive 1 because the y goes from 0 at the top down. Uh, at left arrow, we want this to be negative 1 because that's to the left and opposite y is going to be 0. And the up arrow is going to be x at 0 and y at negative 1. Now, there's still a problem because of some reason that is beyond me, everything seems to work fine and if I move him over to this wall and he collides with it, I can keep pressing left and he won't move. But I press up and down and it also doesn't move, which is not what we want at all. We want him to be interacting with the game properly. So what's the problem? Honestly, I don't know exactly, but I do have a way to fix it. Um, I've come up with a couple ways, but this seems to be the simplest and the most uh, easy, I guess. So let's go to set collision polygon over here in the image editor. Uh, this is how your character interacts with the world. So even if your box is like this small and your sprite is really big, it's still only going to collide with this box and not actually collide with your character. Just so a quick uh, update on that. But uh, what we want to do is create a one pixel border around our entire player character. So. Uh, let's click this top left corner and add one and add one to uh, the side and that's going to put us in one pixel uh, down to the right. We're going to do y plus one here and x minus one. This one is going to be minus one and minus one from both the x and the y and then this one is going to be plus one x minus one y. Uh, yeah and that's basically it. So now when we press play, not that button, this one, you can see our character moves around, he hits this wall, he moves up and down, he stays, and you can see that he also collides with both our walls even though we only have the reference to the one thing, so we don't have to keep reminding the computer to do things. And my girlfriend is busy. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's basically it for today. Um, I hope it was simple enough for you guys to understand, and uh, I'm excited to keep going with this series. I'm having a lot of fun. I will continue the platforming series on a later date, probably when I get back from Japan, which I'm going to on Wednesday, which is pretty exciting. But uh, anyway, yeah, I hope you guys learned a lot, and uh, good luck with your games. I will catch you all next time. So just relax and breathe.